Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be making Rincewind the Wizard. Um, if you know who Rincewind is, we can definitely be friends. <laughs> but if you don't, Rincewind is a wizard and he appears in a lot of Terry Pratchett's novels, um, the Discworld series, um, and he's hilarious. <laughs> I absolutely love Rincewind. Um, he is literally a wizard that is crap at being a wizard. <laughs> he literally survives by the skin of his teeth in like most of the series so I thought I would I needed to make him he's just like the best wizard um so I started by sort of taking this box apart it's a little box that I've had in my drawer for ages <laughs> um and then drilling loads of holes in it because uh rinse wind has a a, a companion I was going to say a pet but I can't really call it a pet I don't know it's his luggage um, his luggage is described as a maniac and will protect its owner. So Rincewind is quite lucky. His his luggage doesn't want to kill him, but his luggage wants to kill everybody else. So we're going to start with him. Um, literally, I <laughs> drilled loads of holes into the box and turned him into like this weird spider box. <laughs> um, using a bit of steel wire. Um, stuck him in the oven once so that I could you know really manipulate the legs because steel wire is actually quite hard to bend um, so I needed it to be quite strong inside the box um, and then I'm going to turn them into hundreds of little legs well not hundreds because there's not hundreds there but the concept of hundreds of little legs is there <laughs> Once I had shortened all the legs down to the lengths that I wanted them to be, um, I kept the back legs quite straight because those I'm going to use to anchor the entire sculpture to my IKEA pot lid base. <laughs> um, so I literally just anchor the, the rear legs into the base and I use the front legs to be more animated. Um, for Rincewind's armature I literally used the same steel wire twisted it into like a triangle so that we can use that as the top half of his torso um, and I bunged in some scrap clay into the top of the lid just so that it would hold there nicely um, so that yeah I can then start the sculpting process I wanted to start with um, luggage first purely because it would be easier to completely sculpt him and then sculpt rinse win later so i do a full sculpt on the box first and turn him into the leggy creature that he is i just might add that uh, this is a, a quite a fast process for you but i had to make 120 toes <laughs> 120 toes was a killer <laughs> thought I'd give you a little rundown on what luggage actually is. Um, he, he's made of a magical wood that is known to produce hundreds of tiny legs. <laughs> I don't know where this sort of magic comes from but it's an ancient magic um, which only grows in certain places so like ancient burial grounds and stuff like that. Um, and it can yeah it, it produces all of these tiny little legs um, which can move really fast which is great for running away which for Rincewind is a perfect companion because Rincewind is an incredibly cowardly wizard. <laughs> um, the luggage is, in, in Terry Pratchett's words, described as half suitcase, half homicidal maniac. <laughs> so luggage is, is a very important part of um, Rincewind's story. Um, I first saw luggage in like the original PS1 game but that's where Discworld first came into my life and um, was through a a computer game but obviously I, I quickly learned to love the books thereafter <laughs> um, but yeah if you haven't read any of Terry Pratchett's books I strongly suggest you do if you are a lover of fantasy and humor you will love his books um, this is me starting the process of the 120 toes I want you to feel sorry for me now because this is quick for you but genuinely took me flipping ages. <laughs>
Once I finished sculpting Luggage's tongue, um, he was into the oven for his final bake, and then I moved on to sculpting Rincewind. So to begin with, I had to kind of figure out how I was going to attach his legs, because the steel wire, you can't wrap around itself or anything else like that. So I ended up super gluing it down and then wrapping it in more like more flexible wire that I have and then adding milliput to the base just to hold it all together and it works really really well um for his arms I literally just it kind of looks like I'm sewing it on with wire which is kind of what I did I suppose <laughs> um but yeah I just wrapped that up with more wire and super glued that although the super glue didn't really help because the arms did just sort of twist in their wire wrap <laughs> um so I did end up having to sort of wrap that up with the foil instead um but uh, generally his armature works really well because i've used steel rather than aluminium normally i would use aluminium wire for my sculptures but this one i knew i needed something a little bit more heavy duty um so i'm using steel on this occasion which is actually quite cheap i've I got it from the gardening section of like my local store so <laughs> um using steel wire instead of sculpting wire will save you an absolute fortune <laughs> Now I'm going to sculpt his face. Um, this is actually the second rendition of his face. The first rendition was terrible, so I, I didn't include that. <laughs> um, but his, th this is the face that I went with in the end. Um, I, I want you to all bear in mind that this is my my rendition of Rincewind. Um, I'm sure the people that know the, the books and whatnot will have seen um, Paul Kidby's um, artworks on Rincewind and they are amazing but I, I wanted to create the Rincewind that you know is in my head <laughs> so as much as his artwork definitely inspired me I took all of um, like Rincewind's clothing and stuff like that I kept them exactly the same because let's face it he has created a Rincewind that is also described in the book I've, I've just gone with my version on his face mainly because I'm terrible at sculpting faces <laughs> and I'm even worse at sculpting faces that look exactly like somebody else's work and to be quite honest I would rather I created my own anyway um so this is my rinse wind it, right now he looks quite soulless <laughs> just staring into the ether um I, his eyes are like milliput leftover milliput that I've had from previous projects I always turn them into like eyes and teeth if I've got leftovers um, because I always need them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I sculpted his face. Obviously, he doesn't look quite right. He hasn't got a chin. He will get a chin later when I add his beard. <laughs> <laughs> Now that I've got his general shape, I'm literally going to go in and sculpt all the teeny tiny details. Um, I wanted like all the fabrics that he's wearing, so his leather shoes and his leather trousers, or pants in America, so us Brits pants are like underwear. <laughs> um, so his trousers, I, I need like um, that ripply effect, so it looks like the fabric's actually moving. Um, so I'm going to literally add in all of these little worms of clay all over the place to make it look like the the fabric is moving um if you're trying to sculpt fabric and you're not quite sure where the bends and folds would be have a look on yourself literally have a look at where the creases are on your trousers or pants <laughs> and then uh, you know if you're struggling with like longer fabrics drape some fabric over a chair you will literally see where all those curves are and um it'll start making a little bit more sense to you um, but yeah, this is literally my favourite bit where I start adding in all of the fine details because that's where I start seeing my idea come to life because there is always the trust the process bit and when it's in its, uh, I don't know, simplest form, it never looks right. But if you keep at it and you keep adding stuff and, and to be fair, that's how I hide all of my mistakes. I just keep adding detail until it's gone. <laughs> So 
So I decided I wanted to try something new. This is actually um, bug mesh. <laughs> I, I had a look at sculpting mesh and I almost had a heart attack at the price. So obviously I did my usual and searched the internet to find something cheaper. This is actually insect mesh. It's designed to keep insects away from small windows. <laughs> so I'm using that. It is literally the same stuff. There is just a massive difference in the price. Um, but to attach this cape, I literally covered it in um, my clay. Um, and I'm using some of my um, aluminium wire. Um, just sort of to peg it into the main body of the sculpture and to hold that all down together so that we don't have any cracks or breaks or slippage when we're in the baking process. Um, I'm quite pleased that I can say that it worked absolutely perfectly. Um, I am, I'm not using cosplay in any of this sculpture, which mainly because I've run out. <laughs> um, so I'm using just Sculpey Original and... Um, I don't have any cracking issue, which sometimes can be a big problem with Super Sculpey. It can crack during the baking process, but with the right armature, um, it doesn't. So I, yeah, I strongly recommend using this bug mesh. I, all the materials that I've used, I will leave in the description below. So if you want to order yourself some, you can. To make his hat I'm using the same method as I did with his cape just to make sure that uh, we don't have any floppy saggy hats in the oven. <laughs> um, I did stick the the rim of his hat on his head and then realised that I hadn't given him any hair uh, <laughs> so I had to take the rim off which left like this crater in the side of his head. <laughs> Honestly he's okay it, it's not a head injury he's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah I sculpted his hair and then I added the rim back on and this amazing foil hat went on top just to try and keep the weight down and the cost of clay down. <laughs> I literally just uh, jammed this cone onto the top of his head, actually causing a head injury now, <laughs> and then sculpted his hat. I'm also going to use the mesh as um, a print. So we've got like this fabricy texture going on on the hat and I really liked that. <laughs> um, but yeah, then it was back to adding more detail um, this is an important bag so <laughs> Rincewind has a particular obsession with potatoes so I felt like he needed his bag of potatoes with him um, in the book Terry Pratchett describes his his uh, love of potatoes so deep that in order to cure it a psychiatrist would need a beautiful lady a plate of potatoes and a bat with nails in it <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, I didn't show the process of sculpting his hands mainly because I don't like sculpting hands and these hands are not great so I'm not going to show you how I did them. <laughs> um, that and I forgot to actually press record on the other hand with the book. It would have been helpful if you'd seen how I'd sculpted the book but you know, I'm an idiot and didn't press record. So I apologise on behalf of not showing hands. They're, they're awful though. I don't like his hands. I might at some point go back in and try to sculpt them separately. <laughs> After adding the final little details like this button on his cuffs I put him in the oven for one bake just the, the wizard went in for one bake <laughs> and then it was on for painting because there was no hiccups during the baking process which is always lovely um, I primed him in black and then I just dry brushed him in white um, and then I am going on to use lots of different paints now I seem to have collected quite a few um, so there is Citadel um, army painter and Vallejo paints that I'm using. I've, once again, the, the link is all in the description. Um, and then, yeah, I just enjoyed my favorite part, which is the painting, because the painting is where my idea really comes to life. So I will leave you to the painting montage and I will see you at the end. <laughs>
It's me, I'm back. <laughs> now, all you people, the, the, the ones that like to spell everything right, his hat is spelt wrong on purpose. He has wizard spelt wrong on his hat. <laughs> so I just thought I'd point that out before you come and attack me in the comments. And then it was on to my least favorite part because this actually hurt. <laughs> when using a static grass applicator, be careful because otherwise this will happen. It turns out that static grass applicators hold their charge even when you've not got the button on and it bloody hurts. It in fact sent my finger numb and made my chest feel funny. So, so be careful. <laughs> um, so yeah, once I had thoroughly electrocuted myself and added all my grass, um, that was my diorama finished. <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed watching um, and thank you very much. Please do take a moment to like and comment and subscribe and all that wonderful stuff. And I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye. <laughs>